You can't gang! So this is an ADAS model. We're in an inflationary gap. Does anybody have any questions? I love it. <laughs> What's up, Econ Gang? This is Mr. Jager. Today we're going to be going over Module 6, Supply and Demand. This video is perfect if you are taking an introductory macro class or if you are taking AP Econ. Specifically today, we're going to look at the supply curve. Supply is the goods and services sellers are willing and able to sell at different price levels. Now, the important things here is to understand is that it is both willing and able. Quantity supplied is the actual amount of goods or services people are willing to sell at some specific price. So very uh, important to note here is that a change in price on the supply curve is merely just movement up or down the supply curve or movement up or down on the supply schedule that we'll see here shortly. Now here on the right, we have a supply schedule. You can see that there's a column for price and there is a column for candy bars supplied. So this is a market for candy bars. Now at the different price levels at 50 cents, producers are willing and able to sell candy bars at a dollar. They are willing and able to sell the, sell 25 and then so on to $2 and 50 cents. They are willing and able to sell 40. Now, from the supply schedule, you would plot the points on your graph, and that would produce your supply curve. Again, very important to note here that movement in price is just, or a change in price is just movement along the curve. You can see if we change the price from 50 cents to a dollar, that's just movement down the supply schedule, or that would be movement along the supply curve. Now, the law of supply, very important to get, is there's a direct relationship with price and quantity supplied. You can see here that as quantity supplied goes down, price goes down. As quantity supplied goes up, price goes up. Now, plotting our points, we can see here the supply curve. It's going to be an upward sloping curve uh, going up towards the sky. Also to note here is that we've labeled it S sub 1. Very important that when you are doing your supply and demand graphs that you are labeling each curve S sub 1, S sub 2, if there's going to be a shift, which we will show shortly. Now here would be an increase in supply. You're going to shift the curve to the right. We notice the arrow showing the shift. Also, you will notice that uh, the uh, supply curve, the original supply curve is S sub 1, and the second supply curve is S sub 2. A decrease in supply, you'll see a shift to the left. Again, you'll notice that the original supply curve is S sub 1, and the second supply curve is S sub 2, with the arrow showing the shift. There are five different shifters for supply. There is input prices is a shift, price of related goods or services, and this is substitutes in production or complements in production. Uh, producers expectation, number of producers, and technology. Uh, so those are our five shifters. I rent is a good way to remember the different shifters. Now, looking first at input prices. Input prices is anything that goes into producing your goods. So uh, if we're going to be hamburger producers, any inputs would be like pickles, tomatoes, lettuce, hamburger buns. Those would be inputs, right? And then, of course, the, the beef. If the price of any of those goes up, we would shift our supply to the left. Or if the price goes down, we would shift our supply to the right. Now, price of related goods looks at subs and complements in production, right? And specifically production. So if uh, milk and cheese would be complements in production. Uh, others examples would be chickens, uh, so chicken meat and eggs would be complements in production. Black markers and red markers are substitutes in production, right? And then jalapenos and beans would be substitutes in production. Substitutes in production is stuff that you would sub the out that you could do very easily. Complements are stuff that go together, right? Now, fall in substitute production, supply will uh, increase. Now, if there's a rise in substitute production, supply will decrease. And if there is a rise in complement uh, production, supply will increase. If there's a fall in uh, complement production, supply will decrease. Now, future expectations is our next shifter. Expected price levels to fall, uh, supply will increase today. 
trying to get that production out. Now, if expected price levels increase, supply will decrease today. Number of producers and number of sellers. If there's an increase in sellers, of course, that means there's going to be an increase in supply. There's more people selling that product. If there's a decrease in sellers, there's going to be a decrease in supply. Okay, moving on to technology. If there's an improvement in technology, this, of course, is going to improve, increase supply. Think of, let's say, our burger example from earlier. If we get a technology that's able to produce burgers faster or a new grill that's able to cook burgers much quicker, then in that case, we would be able to pump out more burgers faster, right? Leading to more supply. So that would push the supply curve to the right. Now, if technology is no longer available, uh, that would be a decrease in supply. Now, individuals versus market supply, again, very similar to how market supply is determined for demand. Individual supply curves is on the graph, shows the relationship between price and quantity supplied for a producer. So everybody has their individual supply curve. But if we take all those supply curves, add them together, that would give us our market supply curve. That's it for today. And I want to thank everybody out there for uh, listening to this video. If you guys could please uh, subscribe to my channel. And thank you. Any comments that you guys have, leave it uh, leave below. Uh, thank you and have a great day. Peace.